Good afternoon and welcome everyone. On behalf of Governor McCrory, Secretary Klutz, Mayor Al King, City Manager Scott Stevens, and Mayor Pro Tem Chuck Allen, who will be here in just a second, we want to thank you for being here. Where is he? Oh, there you are. You're invisible, man. I didn't recognize you. <laughs> My role today is to acknowledge and introduce some of the key folks that are here with us today. Uh, on behalf of the city and myself, I wish to thank you. If you will, if you're standing, please raise, raise your hand if I mention your name. If you're sitting, if you'll please stand. I have Judge Charles Gaylor, um, of course, Mayor Al King, Mayor Pro Tem Chuck Allen, um, current council members, uh, Council Member Gene Acock, Council Member Bill Broadway. Um, I just want to mention the city adopted a resolution in early 2014 to support the continuation of the historic pres preservation tax credits. I also want to recognize yeah. Assistant County Manager Tommy Burns and also former County Commissioner Ken Gerard and Stephen Keene. I also need to recognize Jeff Adelson. He's with the State Historic Preservation Office. He's our regional rep and who I call upon any time I need a tax credit project completed. And Mike Haney with the Development Alliance. I also need to recognize Chamber President Kate Daniels, who helped take the lead in initiating incorporation of verbiage to support the historic preservation tax credits in the North Carolina East Alliance of Chamber of Commerce legislative agenda. And they did this for the past two years, along with the Wayne County Chamber board members. This alliance is the regional voice of business representing Carteret, Craven, Duplin, Edgecombe, Green, Jones, Lenore, Onslow, Pamlico, Pitt, Wayne, and Wilson County. So thank you, Kate. Also, our city leadership team, Scott Stevens, Angel Wright Lanier, Randy Guthrie, Sherry Archibald, Scott Bernard, Chief Stewart, Karen Brashear, Kim Best, Jose Martinez, and Scott Williams. Thanks for many of you who are helping set up for today. Um, many of us have worked hard to assure the State Historic Preservation Tax Credits remain a valuable tool to assure that these important projects statewide continue through resolutions, declarations, emails, petitions, personal communications, meetings, and well, I just want to say thank you. And now I'm going to turn it over to City Manager Scott Stevens. Well, thank you, Julie. Good afternoon and welcome. We thank you for attending today's event. Downtown Goldsboro and the surrounding area are realizing a significant transformation due to many people's determination, Julie one of those, uh, vision and several key partnerships. We have over $15 million in public infrastructure projects under construction at this site and throughout our downtown. Funding for this work is being provided by the city and our state and federal Department of Transportation. The governor and secretary's visit today to discuss and promote historic tax credits means a great deal to Goldsboro and is very timely. Just as interest in our downtown and many of our historic structures was picking up last year, the discussion and eventual elimination of the historic preservation tax credits created tremendous concern for Goldsboro and the future of many historic properties in need of restoration. I talked with one developer last year who chose not to renovate five historic structures in this neighborhood for single family use due to the uncertain future of the historic tax credits at that time. His decision not to invest roughly a million dollars in our community and renovate five historic structures was a casualty of the loss of the historic tax credits last year. We have a number of structures, including Union Station behind me, which are potential candidates for historic tax credit projects. Restoring some version of the historic tax credits is very important in helping developers to afford the work that is required to bring our history back to life. It is an exciting time for Goldsboro. I'm delighted to be its city manager. And while I look forward to its future, I hope we can restore and enjoy more of its past. At this time, I'll turn it over to Mayor King. Mayor. Hello, and what a great day it is to have a very special day in our great city. I want to thank you for coming, and I'm sure you will not regret the fact that you're here. 
I'm also honored to be on the stage with two of North Carolina's top, top dogs. And, and I know both of them. They're both uh, uh, Metro Mayors, and that's an organization that the two of them helped start. And we have about 25, uh, 27 members now. And uh, the lady I'm supposed to introduce, uh, she needs no introduction. Uh, Susan Klutz, and we've already told you what she is. She is Secretary, Department of Cultural Resources. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> culture. We, we need culture in our city. Uh, we do, and you can tell because I'm standing here. But we're, we're going to get some from her. And, and there's one other thing I'd like to say about uh, Mayor Klutz. I can still call you Mayor Klutz, can I? Okay. When she was mayor of Salisbury, that's when I heard about her, and that's been a number of years ago. She did wonders in Salisbury. I don't know if you've been there in the last 10, 15 years, but she turned Salisbury around and stood it on its head. If you haven't been there, you need to go to Salisbury and look at what they've done, and it's her fault. And having said that, I was given four minutes, and I said I'd do it in two. I might be running over a little bit. But it's my honor and distinct privilege to introduce Susan Klutz, who is our Department of Cultural Resources. And she can handle resources, let me tell you. <laughs> Secretary Klutz. Well, you've got a great mayor. And let me tell you, I know that from working with him for years statewide. He represents you so well, and I know you're so proud of him. And thank you. I appreciate the invitation to be here today. Thank you to him as well as Scott Stevens, Julie Metz, Aaron Acri, and Sarah Merritt for all encouraging us to come and be here. I'm traveling today with Carrie Cox, who's sitting on the front row. Carrie, raise your hand. Marketing Director of the Department of Cultural Resources. Jeff Adolson, who's al already been um, introduced from... Preservation Office, a historic preservation specialist, Martha Jenkins, our legislative liaison, Matt Weiner, our uh, photographer, and Brian Nestor, our videographer. So we all are here today for a reason, and that reason is we've got a crisis that you need to be, sh be sure that you're aware of and that you make citizens in Goldsboro and Wayne County aware of as well. The historic preservation tax credits expired at the end of the year and we have got to get them back. When the governor appointed me as secretary of the Department of Cultural Resources nearly two, over two years ago, he made it very clear what I was to do. That was to use the Department of Cultural Resources for economic development and job creation. And I know of no better way than I can do that than to promote bringing back these credits. I'm so proud to have a governor that's been a mayor and that understands what these mean to, to cities, to towns, and to the entire state of North Carolina. The facts are that the federal credits came in at the end of the 70s, and then in the 90, late 90s, our state was wise enough to bring them back and piggyback on them for the state credits. Since then, we've seen 90 out of 100 counties use them. Since the late 90s, we have seen $1.67 billion in private investment in the state. But when the governor came into office, he said he felt that it would be difficult to get, that, get them through the legislature because they were ex very expensive to the state at that time. So he charged me with working with my department, with the Department of Commerce, to come up with a plan that would reduce the cost of the state by lowering percentages, by putting caps on very large projects, by reducing residential, and by providing more budget predictability. And we came up with a wonderful plan. And I'm plan pleased to say that that plan was put and introduced into the House uh, by Representative Ross. It passed overwhelmingly the week before last. And I'm very proud of the representatives, um, <laughs> including your own Representative John Bell and Representative Larry Bell, who voted for it. And I am very grateful to them and the success we had in the House. But we continue to face now our biggest challenge, which is the Senate, and that's where we need your help. What are we doing about this? First of all, beginning the, right after Christmas, 
um, with the governor's instructions, we put together a coalition. There's so many people and so many groups in the state of North Carolina that know how urgent this is. And our coalition includes uh, the state associations of architects, bankers, contractors. We have 10 local chambers of commerce. We have the Association of Downtown Developers. We have economic developers. We have realtors. We have Central Line of Council of Governments. We have the Association of County Commissioners. We have the North Carolina League of Municipalities, the North Carolina Metropolitan Coalition, and Preservation North Carolina, just to name a few of our coalition members who meet regularly. We have a website, historictaxcredits.org, and we have a petition that people can sign, and we have over 5,000 people who have signed that petition. In addition, I embarked, beginning the 1st of January, on what I'm doing today, which is an awareness tour. This is my 52nd stop and my 34th city or town that I have visited all over the state to do exactly what I'm doing today. And I call it an awareness tour because I want citizens in this community to be aware of what the tax credits are, to understand the successes that they have created in the city, to understand the potential that is still needed for them. I find that most citizens in North Carolina have no idea what the tax credits are. They don't know when wonderful things happened in their community that the tax credits were responsible. And so that's what I want, is I want people just to be aware, to let their legislators know, and right now to let their senators know, that not only do they need to agree to vote for this, they need to speak up to the Senate, Senate leadership and say, we have got to have this. I am so proud of your Senator Pate, who actually is a co-sponsor of our companion bill. Uh, we have House Bill Number 152, and Fletcher Hartzell in the Senate rec uh, presented uh, Senate Bill 287. And Senator Pate understands it, he gets it, and he co-sponsored it. Senator Don Davis, as well, has told us that he is in favor of this. But we need a majority of the senators. We need the senators to agree to it. And lastly, before I introduce our special guest with me today, let me just say that this one thing that I don't hear, what I hear in Raleigh is this is a philosophy. This is no do away with tax credits. This has to do with tax reform. But I'll tell you what I don't hear. I don't hear that this is the history of North Carolina. And I can tell you from everywhere I've been and, and what I have seen has been just incredible. Textiles, furniture, tobacco, even peanut, a peanut mill in Edenton theaters, department stores, the list goes on and on of a beautiful story it tells of the history of North Carolina. We've got a rich history. North Carolinians value that history. It's our parents, it's our grandparents, it's our great-grandparents, and North Carolinians cannot continue to be quiet about this. You have to make your voices heard. I'm thrilled now that I have the tremendous support of the governor for the for these tax credits for historic preservation for everything to do with cultural resources from arts council to history uh, to the symphony it goes on and on he's been a tremendous supporter of what he understands is not only economic development and jobs it's the quality of life for us in north carolina so i'm so proud ladies and gentlemen to present to you somebody that i see every week in cabinet meetings as, as a member of his cabinet i see his vision his dedication and how hard he's working to make north carolina even a better state than it is ladies and gentlemen i present to you the 74th governor of the state of north carolina the honorable pat mccrory thank you all very much let me first thank the secretary she's working hard She's not just working hard for today, but she's working hard for the next generation. I also want to thank your mayor. He's been a longtime friend of myself and of Susan. He needs more passion, don't you think? <laughs> I love this guy. He, he, he loves his community. He's giving back to his community, and he's giving back to the next generation. So towns like Goldsboro will continue to have a, a sustainable economic and quality of life future. I was sworn in as the 74th governor in the second week of January of 2013. And I made a point of being sworn in overlooking the main street of our state capitol. I made a point to move the whole ceremony to the main street of our state capitol. And the reason I did that was because I said, while looking down Fayetteville Street, I said, 
we've got a job now. We've got to revitalize North Carolina. At the time, we had the fifth highest unemployment rate in the country in January of 2013. Now we're not even the top 25 in unemployment. We're in the top 20 of employment. We've made great progress. But we've still got to revitalize the main streets of all towns and cities in North Carolina because this is our history, this is our future, this is our future jobs, this is the preservation of our history, and this is our values. And from Goldsboro to Wilkesboro to Tarboro to Greensboro, we've got town centers that we've got to revitalize and continue to rebuild because I can't sell blighted blocks. I can't sell blighted buildings when I'm bringing industry in to sell North Carolina. Because when I bring industries into Wayne County or any other county, I'm going to have to sell the entire region. And the first place people look at when they consider moving here or moving their industries here is, let me go see your town center. Because the town center shows whether or not you have a viable economic future and quality of life. That's just a fact. I know this as a mayor for 14 years. Because when I was a mayor and I'd sell industry to the city that I was mayor of, people would say, let me see your town center. Even though they might have been building their industry 20 miles away, they said, let me see your town center. I want to see your main street. So I spent a long part of my career as a mayor rebuilding main street. And as governor, I'm going to do the exact same thing. Main streets throughout North Carolina, including right here in Goldsboro, go up right at Walnut Street, we cross Main Street. This is the vital intersection of this region. We sell your Main Street to sell jobs, to sell quality of life. And if we have empty buildings, and if we have blight, it makes it a tougher sell. And you know how blight grows block by block by block? You've seen it, right? I've seen in every town and every city in North Carolina, once you have blight, one blight, then the next blight, then the next blight. It just, it cascades. Well, the same thing has to do with revitalization. Once you revitalize what you're doing along here, one house, the next thing you know, you know what? That next house might be a good investment. It's a great piece of real estate. It's a great piece of architecture. Then they rebuild that. The next thing you know, across the street, Revitalization grows, can grow even quicker than blight grows. Now we have a choice. Do we grow revitalization or do we grow blight? I don't think there is a choice. There's only one answer. So we've got to use the tools necessary to make this happen, to help the main streets of every small, large, and middle-sized town and city in North Carolina. Because this is what we're selling in North Carolina. We're selling the quality of life and our history and our values. And there's no better history and values than right here on Wal Wal the corner of Walnut and, and Main Street, right here in Goldsboro, right? You ought to be proud of your city. I know your mayor is. I know your mayor pro tem is. I'm proud of it. But we've got a lot of work to do. We've got a lot of work to do. And I, I just love to see this revitalization of this transportation center. I mean, just think of just 30, 40 years ago, the activity that was on this street, and now it's going to come back. It'll come back gradually. I've seen it happen as a mayor, and I've seen it happen as a governor throughout this state. It's a block at a time. It's a block at a time. It's like clean. My mom used to say, clean up your room. <laughs> It'll make the house look better. Then you go clean up the next room. Then you go clean the yard up, and it increases the value of your house and increases your quality of life. The same thing applies to a town center. Your mayor gets it, Secretary of Cultural Resources gets it, and this governor gets it. Now, this is where we need your help. We're fortunate, because I can't say this in every, in every community, that you have some House leaders and you have a Senate leader that are supporting legislation to revitalize and renew the historical tax credits. That's good news. The bad news is this. We can't get it through a committee to even allow a vote. And that's not the democratic way we should have in North Carolina. If we have a good idea and one chamber approves that good idea, don't we at least deserve a vote on the Senate floor so the people of North Carolina can see where the representatives stand on historical tax credits? 
So that's what I'm asking you to do now. We have a bill, but a bill doesn't do you any good if it languishes and it's held up by just a few people. A few people are holding up a bill that impacts 9.6 million people of North Carolina. Impacts are small towns and large cities alike. We cannot have a few people block a constructive, productive bill, not only for today, but future generations. And I need you to send that message in Raleigh. She's doing a, what do you call it, informative tour? Awareness, Awareness tour. I'm being stronger than that. <laughs> let's, let's win. Let's, let's call this a winning tour where we, we've revitalized these buildings right across the street. What a beautiful building this is right across the street. What beautiful houses you have. I mean, I always can tell the historical value and the architectural genius of, by looking at the tops of buildings. And I look at the top of the building right behind you, and I see this incredible brickwork that was done by, just think of the people that built this building across the street. Look at the value of the design. Look at the design on top of this building. You don't see that anymore. If you rebuild this as you are, if you then rebuild the building across the street, guess what you'll start having? You'll start having travel and tourism too, which is a major crucial part of our economic engine in North Carolina. We have agriculture, we have manufacturing, we have finance. Travel and tourism is as important as any of those. And what we have found out that in small towns and large cities alike, when we see the historical revitalization of buildings, People who drive down the major highways go, let's get off. Let's get off the exit or Rocky Mount or Wilson or Kinston and go see their town center. And then let's go buy something and spend some money. Isn't that nice to see? That's what we need to have. But we can't afford to have blighted buildings any longer. The historical tax credit is a concept that was started by President Ronald Reagan. President Ronald Reagan started the concept of encouraging private sector investment, in which we then get a return on that investment within a very short period of time. This is a basic conservative philosophy started by Ronald Reagan. There is no reason why a conservative philosophy of encouraging private sector investment can't get a vote in one of our chambers. There is no reason for it. And I need you to sp speak your mind. I need you to write letters. I need you to go to Raleigh to make it happen. It's important for the future Goldsboro. It's important for the future Wayne County. It's important for this region and for our state. And we're going to keep traveling the state and get this message across because there is a great future right here on Walnut Street. There's a great future on Main Street. There's a great future in these neighborhoods that have seen decline during the past 20 and 30 years. But I see, a, I see a bright future. But it's going to take all of us together to make it happen. Thank you, and God bless each one of you. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Very good. You did good. That's a good man right here. You, you did good. Well, I don't know why I got elected to follow the governor. <laughs> but all I can say is Watch amen. Watch amen. Watch I thought he, he's better than any Baptist preacher I've ever heard. He's, I'm ready to sign up. But seriously, we won't, we, Goldsboro, Wayne County has benefited from about $5 million worth of these tax credits. It's a huge deal. It's a huge deal to all these developers that are wanting to do things downtown. And everybody's sitting on the fence, and they're waiting on these kind folks to do their work. But we all need to help them. I know that he's preaching to the choir out here, but the choir knows a lot of other people in this county, in this city, and in this state. And we need to all help. We can write letters. We can send emails, whatever you can do. And I'm, I'm ready to sign up today. So let's do what we can to help them accomplish this because it is a huge deal. And we thank all of you for coming out and spending time with us today. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Kitty.